Okay, I thought I'd do try a building montage video, so it'll just be lots of little short clips all cut together. So at the moment we're starting off with painted moulds. Painted moulds. So the process will be I'll just put some um, resin into there, and I'll put a bead of um, a bead of filler through the leading edge and around bits and pieces. Oops, around bits and pieces like that, and the bolts. And uh, put the veil cloth in, and then I'll let that sit. Okay, disposable brushes. So what I do with mine uh, is give them an extra crimp in the vise. Really give it a good squeeze in there, and if you're really keen, I actually go in with... Uh, with some Sino, some th super thin Sino, and I'll go in with the nozzle like from the side. I'll put the nozzle in from the side. I can't do it now because it's locked up. And just put a put a bead of Sino through there and let it go off. So should keep all the bristles in place. Right. So I've set out um, I've set out the veil cloth onto freezer film. The freezer film is. Well, that's what I'm using. I don't know what what's available at the time you watch this, but it's just a yeah you know, a plastic that goes between foods so they don't stick together in the freezer. Um, so the next process will be to wet that out, and then put another layer of freezer film on top of that, and then and then oh, come on. Put the template over the lot of it, trace around the template, transfer it across to the cutting board, and cut air out around the template, and then place it in the mould. All right. So uh, mixing the epoxy, this uh, the epoxy I use is a three to one mix, and I use coins and a beam balance rather than a set of scales because I've had batteries stop working on me and and buttons getting changed inadvertently from ounces to grams and getting confusion so this is simple for me which is what I need um, so how this will work is is I put in one coin and I've got a number of a number of currency coins here depending on what I want to mix up weight wise so I'll put in one coin balance that with hardener then I'll put in the rest of the coins and rebalance it with the resin and mix. And as far as the uh, putting the mm, splooge, as people like to call it, into the bag, these piping bags were tipped. A good tip from Steve Guy97. Thanks, Steve. These piping bags. So I just get anything with a handle, pop it in the bag, and I've got this thing here with just a couple of weights in it, a couple of bits of lead bottle with the lid cut off the top that just fits in there fold it over Oop. and fold it over and then that's that's ready to put the splooge into uh, to pipe all right let's make a start all right so I've got the one coin in there and it's as straightforward as this. You can feel it by tapping it, you can feel it when it's starting to get close to the balance point. And I mean, it can literally take a drop. All right, so that's the hardener. And now we put in the resin. There it is. Mix and keep going. Alright, here the veil cloth is wet out, and I've got the second layer of freezer film over the top, and I've drawn around the template. 
couple of bolt hole spots there. Kind of drawn around the template, ready to move over to the cutting pad, mat, whatever, and uh, I'll run around it with the, the roller knife and then transfer it across to the mould. So the mould has been brushed with epoxy and uh, I'll mix up some um, what I call my, my joining bulb mix. <clears throat> so that is, look I've tried a different couple of different ratios but just 50-50 is good for me, colloidal silica and cotton flock. I'll give it a good mix and I put mine through the sieve as well to take out any lumps. And that works, so I'll mix up some of that and put it along the leading edge and around the, the servo bays and bolt recesses. Uh, okay, so back again. So now I've got the, the beads of filler. I've put somewhere over the, the uh, recess for the wiper. And I've got some around the servo, I've got some around the bolt holes and along the leading edge. I've taken the, sorry, I've cut around the uh, outline that I drew with the template and I've peeled off the the backing layer for the want of a better term off the material and now I'm just I've just got the fiberglass on a transfer film and then that, that will lift over to the over to the mold and you'll miss all the swearing and cursing as I try and line it all up. Transfer complete but I've still got the transfer film on the back and I'll just go over it with a roller or even my hand for that matter do my best to get out most of the stuff you can see the air, air bubbles getting squeegeed out there to get the idea there look at this one here there's a nice big air bubble stuck under there so we'll work that to the leading edge. Go across those places where I had the goop. Right, see if I can get this transfer film off easily without destroying everything. For the bolt holes, basically where I marked it on the transfer film, I basically just cut a uh, an asterisk with the with the roller knife, and that uh, allowed it to form over the um, bolt recesses. Let's put this in the bin. So now I can go through with the roller and the brush and do a, do a proper job of it. Anyway, it's all mundane from here. I'll um, I'll come back. So because this is the veil cloth, and uh, like you, you're going to get, it's the layer behind the paint. So if there's any air bubbles going to appear and and pop the paint open, it's going to be here. So. This is where you try and be really vigilant with getting the air bubbles out from underneath the veil. And glass, you can look at glass and go, oh yeah, that looks pretty good. But then if you actually put a light on it, across it, and I'll show you what I mean, like that, you can actually find there are areas that are less than perfect. No, I'll come around the other side, on the leading edge there. So see how that's, that's really being highlighted there, where there's air bubbles, particularly there. Look at that one. I'm blowing it out with the video. There we go. So just go along the edge with the torch, or with a, a, some sort of form of light to be able to see where there may be any air. Um, process has been repeated on the other side now. Uh, so I've got the veil cloth in there. And um, so what else were I going to say? Oh, a trap for young players is um, 
when you're getting down to I think the last layer or two anyway bottom line is just make sure that you're peeling the right side uh, of the laminate off once you've got it on the transfer film and you've got the other side down make sure just remember to make sure to ensure that you have the correct side you're peeling off the correct side otherwise you can end up yeah you can end up wrong <laughs> for the want of a better word um, you might notice I double glove um, so these are just a five dollar pair of cotton lined gloves from Woolies that I put talcum powder in and and I just use the nitrile gloves over them because I mean you're gonna lose your, your sense of touch with the nitriles anyway and uh, I don't want to touch this stuff um, too many years of it so that uh, that works I'd, uh, I'd advise that all right I think that's it so I'll leave this now for about an hour and I'll come back uh, I'm gonna back this with carbon this looks about <clears throat> oh, I can't remember what weight it is probably 200 odd so a six ounce eight ounce um, carbon so I'll back that onto there and then I will uh, put on the veneer and a layer of fiberglass which is a tight weave fiberglass onto the veneer so I'll vacuum the veneer and the, the fire and the fiberglass onto the semi cured carbon <clears throat> so that'll be the process all right thought I'd try something different this time so um, it'll work with fiberglass but not with carbon or Kevlar <clears throat> but what I did is I actually traced traced the template onto the freezer film first and then flip that over so the inks on the other side on the on the opposite side and then I wet the fiberglass out on top of the back of the tracing so that it, it still um, transfers through you can see where to epoxy to and then I can just run that around the outside and it's done away with basically the backing film and left it with the transfer film so that's worked with fiberglass, but again, won't work with epoxy or Kevlar because you won't be able to see through it. Okay, next layer of glass is in. You can probably just see I've stopped it short of the trailing edge. So there's veil cloth to the trailing edge. The next layer of glass, and that's in uh, both sides. And the uh, core material, I've set the core material in there. Um, I had these little, I just put these little markers on the end to, to locate the core material. So I can take them off now and um, wet out the carbon. I'll probably put a fillet, put a fillet of goop in there. Um, there's probably going to be enough resin in here, enough excess resin to fill any voids under vacuum in there it's probably the same here but then that'll only draw it from the surface so i'll add some more in the servo base and we're good to go well haven't i had some fun since the last video <clears throat> okay so the carbon i wet the carbon out and it went in i had it short um sorry full full cord on one side but short on the other such as how thin the trailing edge of the profile is. And uh, to cut a long story short, I got it under vacuum and my vacuum pump switch started giving me grief. And to the point where it was even, when I took this cover off, it was just cutting in and out really quickly. I saw arcing going on inside the relay so I suspect it's the micro switch down here so what I've done to, to fix that is I um, permanently had the switch open so it's running or closed whichever way that is and I've got a two mil drill bit just started drilling holes into here until I got a level of vacuum that I wanted and the motor is staying 
on consistently like we used to do in the bad old days. We've got a fan running on it to keep it cool. It, it's like not even room temperature at the moment. It's a little bit warm down the bottom corner here. But I've put it in the, got it in the oven so it's now just after 4 p.m. We're up at you know, 34, 35 degrees inside the oven, inside the hot box. So hopefully I'll be able to turn this off before I go to bed. I won't have to leave that running overnight. But, I've, but it's worked now for, gosh, 25, 30 years I built that. I bet you I can't find that part number again. So, um, um, yeah, I'll have to sort of find out what's more available or readily available and what's more technologically advanced for a vacuum system. Anyway. Okay, the look.